So today's all about panoramas, well, a panorama anyway, taken from the top of a tower, and I don't like heights. top of the tower there's a panorama picture and the panorama basically tells you a bit about the area of Rockingham, Cottingham and all around the surrounding area. I've been asked to retake it because it's getting a bit old now and they want updating so I'm going to go up there and have a look and try and recreate it putting my artistic flair on it hopefully. People were so small I can barely fit half a foot on these steps. It's a panorama. I don't know how old this one is. I think it's quite old. Looking at it, it wasn't created on this level. It was created up there. On the tower. I don't like heights. Oh god, do I really have to go up there? No access apparently. Flooring out there doesn't look too good either. If I come out that door down there, it's because I've gone through the roof. Okay, so I've got up here without breaking my neck. I'm just gonna use my 35 mil. The reason I'm gonna use the 35 mil is because it'll get me a little bit closer than the wide angle that I'm using on the vlog camera. And it means I can take a lot more pictures, creating a bigger overall image. So by creating more images, I get more megapixels, which gives them a bigger image, especially if it's gonna be printed out on that down there. They're gonna want a nice sized image um, so they've got all the detail and clarity without it getting all murky and breaking up and pixeling over and all that sort of stuff. And this little gadget that I'm using on top of the tripod compensates for parallax, which is the effect of moving the camera like this and taking a picture and the perspective changes slightly. That's because the actual lens is moving its position. The idea is this little gadget here, this L-shaped thing, is it means that the camera is moving on the lens like that, rather than the lens moving on the body like that. So it should produce a less distorted panorama. There's going to be some distortion anyway because it's going to be super wide, um, but this will just help it a little bit. <laughs> I'm looking at the photo that's down there. I'm trying to work out where the camera was for that picture so I can recreate it. But I've stepped my camera up to try and replicate where the original camera was when that photo down there was taken. So I'm just going to take a series of um, images and I'll be stitching them together later. I'll go through that later as well so you can see how I do that. But what I'm going to use is my little remote so I don't have to touch the camera. I just speed this up so it's not so boring for you. I think that'll do it. Okay, so I don't know how well you see it, but those are all of my photos 
I'm going to use to make the final panorama. So if I go in a bit closer you can see these will all stitch together. And those clouds are lovely and fluffy. I'm quite lucky really. I wanted to get pretty much a 50-50 mix with clouds and blue sky. I think probably it's now it's starting to become too overcast but I got here just at the right time because there's, there's some nice blue in there. So I really make those clouds pop. Um, one thing that the original picture does miss is um, detail in the sky. So hopefully uh, we can make this one look even better. So I've survived. Time to go back downstairs now, down these small person stairs. Well I will say this, it's, it's a lot easier on the way down than it is on the way up. Um, a little precarious, stood up on the tower, um, not knowing whether the flooring was suitable, but they go up there, put the flag up all the time so I knew it would be alright. So I'm going to go back, go back now to the office and import all the photos, do some tweaks, colour correction, things like that, contrast, and um, I'll show you my workflow so you can see how I will be creating the final image.